And a very warm welcome to all of you here to the Barony Hall, uh, one of the jewels in the university's estate, uh, used for many things, uh, major events, conferences, but most importantly, used for the celebration of the achievement of our students. So before me here in the hall and behind me here in the stage are our graduands, who in the process of the next 45 minutes will be transformed into Strathclyde graduates, recognizing their fantastic achievements and getting them launched in the, their careers. To all of the supporters, uh, friends and families, great to have you here. Uh, for those of you that haven't been to Glasgow before, the weather is always like this. <laughs> Don't have any of it that it has been raining over the past couple of days. But uh, anyway, the good news is that uh, we're getting the sun to see the barry, uh, barren at its uh, very best. So as I declare the congregation open in a moment, what we'll do is we will have uh, each student introduced, capped, and then at the end of the ceremony, I'll have a chance to give you an update on what's going on at the university and the impact that these wonderful students and staff are having on the world. So with that, I will declare the congregation formally open and do enjoy the next 45 minutes or so. Thank you. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Callum John Brickle. <laughs> Emma Bruce. Ailey Campbell. <laughs> Misper Chowdhury. John Stephen Craig. Oliver Stephen Craig. Rebecca Margaret Farker. <laughs> Kirsty Rebecca Farkerson. <laughs> Anne Elizabeth Sarah Flynn. <laughs> Nicole Jacqueline Murray Gray. Zoe Kerr. <laughs> Nicholas Benjamin Conopate. <laughs> Megan McAllister. <laughs> Connor Joseph McKee. Lily Morrison. <laughs> Sophie Ann Ross. <laughs> Harris Salim. <laughs> Kerr Andrew Sewell. <laughs> Olivia Stephen. Ikra Yasmin Akram. <laughs> James Peter Allen Anderson. <laughs> Grant Ashford. <laughs> Katie Bingham. Stephen Bocott. Jill Bunyan. Ailey Burns.
Emily Campbell. Rianne Carroll. Michael Cassidy. Zara Kirsty Shatir. Jessica Corey. Sarah Dallamore Wilson. Sean Delaney. Cheryl Linda Margaret Dempster. Lewis Gordon Dobby. James Doherty. Iona Elizabeth Dougal. Nina Helen Wood Ewing. Aidan Farrelly. Lindsay Ferguson. Stuart Fox. Nicole Margaret Galbraith. Anna Martina Gelot. Gintis Goba. Claire Green. Joshua Hashem. Cameron Henderson. Victoria Maureen Elva Higgins. Amy Jane Hughes. Harvey Irvin. Ikra Zaneb Ishak. Lorcan Jackson McLaughlin. Gregor Peter William Jarrett. Scott William Robert Jenkins. Jordan Kelly. Nicole Lewis. Rachel Hannah Livingston. David McBride. Lindsay Ann McBride. Shireen Nisa McCaffrey. Nicole McFarlane. Jamie C. McGowan. Stephen McLaughlin. Anthony John McTeague. Ryan Mitchell. Claire Monroe.
Melissa Kenyon Murray. Claire Nolan. Molly O'Brien. Caitlin O'Hare. Alison Porter. Ailey Lorin Ross. Shannon Jackie Rutter. Yasmin Ashia Rowat Shahid. Kate Frances Mary Stevenson. Kirsty Meg Stewart. Michael Patrick Stewart. Matthew Super. Alana Turnbull. Bridge Valentine. Amy Karen Walker. Terry Jade Walker. Amy Alexander, Alexandra Watson. Kirsty Ann Webb. Kerry Jane Wilson. Christopher John McAllister. Nicole Newman. Sean Nolan. Sanjay Kumar Verma. Siobhan Catherine Brown. Nicola Crawford. Kirk McRobert Cuthill. Lynn Catherine Donaghy. Sarah Valerie Fairley. Rebecca Ann Forbes. Lisa Fowler. Imtiaz Ahmed Gumro. Holly Ann Heppen. Nisa Khan. Jennifer Lee. Hugh McCafferty. Timothy Robert McCowan. Maxine McClatchy. Ross Craig McQueen. Gemma Jane Miller. Nicole Malloy. Nicole Malloy. 
Nadine Montgomery Brown. <laughs> Philip Mernon. <laughs> Rory Peoples. <laughs> Andrew Richmond. <laughs> Abby Jane Russell. Julie Barbara Sharp. Mark Anthony Waters. Shona Westwood. In Law with a Modern Language, Ailey Jane Cullen. Ewan Forsyth. <laughs> Sophie Fenn. <laughs> Olivia Goff. <laughs> Becky Kane. Ibn Arbo, Katrina, Kenneth, David, West. <laughs> Caitlin McKee. <laughs> Kathleen Christina McLeod. <laughs> Rebecca Thompson. Lauren Wiley. <laughs> Emma Burns. <laughs> Monica Hannaway. <laughs> Martin Paul Ryan. In law, clinical, Agata Soroka. <laughs> Emma Mackenzie Manson. <laughs> Victoria Jane Blythe Silva. <laughs> In Scots and English law, Mercy Amadi. Olivia Jane Deneen. Erin Doherty. Abigail McKenna. Innocent Sifilani Maramba. <laughs> Alexander Muir. <laughs> Sophie Elizabeth Richardson. Irene Vulgari Kuniniotti. <laughs> Patricia Louise Roxanne Berlui. <laughs> Natasha Ann Bowles. <laughs> Massimiliano Bonifacino. Anthony Brogan. <laughs> Kirsten Jessica Eleanor Bruce. <laughs> Anna
Andrea Christoffi. Bernadette Marcia Cuthbertson. Connor Devine. Gillian Elizabeth Grant. Jennifer Harris. Aisha Iqbal. Amal Maya Iqbal. Sophia McCallum Jafari. Hamza Khan. Sharon Laidler. Lauren Livingston. Iona Moya McKenty. Connor McGovern. Kay McIntyre. Ryan McIver. Lucy Emily McKay. Murray McKelvey. Zoe Elizabeth Violet Milne. Shannon Ashley Morrison. Gemma Louise Nimmo. Caroline Elaine Reynolds. Erin Rowan. Sean Connolly Scott. Scott Fraser Stevenson. Eve Patricia Telford. Kara Tevin. Sarah Toland. Amy Lauren Trainer. Anna Louise Walker. Sergios Alcaviadis Zavudis. Victoria Elizabeth Bergen. Veronica Pfeiffer. Jade McIlrath. <laughs> Heather Susan McLean. <laughs> Dimitrius Solfanos. <laughs> Kudakwashi Peda Moyo Chinyani. Makula Dembele. In English law, Nicholas Sitsios. Celia Chumzi Chai.
for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Human Resource Management and Law, Joanne Erin Lilly. <laughs> Nicholas Nassi. <laughs> in Law and Economics, Wendy Uzuaku E.J. Megbulam. In Law and French, Lauren Jack. <laughs> Patricia Picarek. <laughs> In Law and Human Resource Management, Megan Orluk. In Law and Politics and International Relations, Struan Ross Domnall McLennan. Sarah Canning. Kieran Joshua Duncan. In Law and Psychology, Christine Ulig. In Law and Social Policy, Jamie Douglas Dodds. In Law Clinical, Scott Christopher MacDonald. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you might have applause fatigue, but let's give the class of 2019 a big collective round of applause. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, graduates of the University of Strathclyde, let me reiterate our sincere and warm welcome to this wonderful ceremony. A day, indeed, that none of you will forget. It marks the successful conclusion of years of hard work, and now you've graduated in front of your proud supporters, your families and friends. Today, we welcome visitors from all parts of Scotland, from across the UK, and indeed, from a wonderful international community. We are delighted to see all of you here to join in the celebrations. Of course, we launch you today into your new careers, into a time of flux and uncertainty, uh, and every day seems to bring another surprise, and that context is important. But think about that as you enter into the exciting steps of your, the next phase of your lives and careers. You just might reflect on the prevailing political dynamics in Scotland, the UK, throughout Europe and across the Atlantic. And it's worthwhile acknowledging that universities uh, are one of those institutions that uh, can take us through uncertainty through the power of being independent, challenging, and uh, a force for good. And Strathclyde is an institution just like that, where freedom of thought is valued and encouraged. We are a place that is both tolerant and inclusive, and where people of diverse national, cultural, and social backgrounds come together to enjoy excellent education and a shared student experience. At Strathclyde, all of us benefit from having students and staff from over 100 different countries. Ours seeks to be a socially progressive community and one that is also an exemplar for modern society. We want to be plural, multicultural, and as far as possible, enlightened. It's our individual and collective responsibilities, never forget that, to continue to challenge unacceptable practices wherever we might find it in our communities, in our places of work, 
and increasingly holding to account those in power who are hardly holding themselves up of paragons of virtue. But of course, we should apply reason in all of this and try to exemplify a diverse and inclusive modern society. But of course, most importantly, we're here to acknowledge your great fruits of your hard work, the learning that you've built up and the successful completion of your various degree courses. Appropriately enough, an electrical engineer like me, Thomas Edison, who you may have heard of, a famous American inventor, reminded us that genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. But I'm sure as Strathclyders, your percentages were a lot better than that in the library and at home getting ready for your examinations. I was brought up here in a fine city of Glasgow in a sunny hamlet called Govan. And our town's historical motto is Cine, or rather Nihil Cine Labore, which means nothing without hard work. And I try to embrace that ethos every day I come to the university. And I would recommend to all of you graduates that you take that approach into your future careers. You're highly accomplished women and men, uh, you're smart, you've had the benefit of a Strathclyde education, but that extra ounce of effort, that hard work and application will get you across the line much more effectively. And today, you've all become Strathclyde alumni. You're the latest of our torchbearers, if you like, just like those in many generations of graduates before you. And with all that you've successfully come through, I'm sure that you agree that you could not have done it without the backing of the community of supporters around you. It is fitting that we acknowledge their part in the successful completion of your university studies. Our graduates and the university at large owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. As the first in my own family to have attended university here in Strathclyde, as it happens, that was in the mid-70s. I was a very talented six-year-old boy. Not many folk can get into university at that age, let me tell you. Uh, I do know the importance of such support. And today's graduates and our university staff would like to take this opportunity to thank all of the supporters, the families and friends, for all that they've done to make today possible. Thank you very much. And for our excellent academic staff too, this is a very important day because ultimately your success is their reward. Strathclyde has worked hard to provide you with a high quality education and a first class university experience for all of our students, regardless of background. So let me now invite our new graduates in the hall and in here on the stage to join me to thank our staff for all that they've done to support you in your journey. Thank you very much. So as you leave the Barony Hall today as graduates, it's important for you to be aware that we were founded in 1796. So your institution is now 223 years old, although I like to think of us as a 200-year-old startup. Exciting, innovative, bold, and pushing for the very best we can be. And throughout our history, the University of Strathclyde has remained faithful to our founding principles. And we were established, and I quote, for the benefit of all mankind. And we were the only higher education institution to be established in Scotland during the time of the Enlightenment. A real distinction for Strathclyde. Uh, we were unique, we were pushing the boundaries, and we challenged the given wisdom. And we're now driving forward that same university strategy in that spirit of the Enlightenment, making it wholly relevant for the 21st century. Our founder, Professor John Anderson, who was a physicist, or natural philosopher, as he would have been called back then, had strong links with Benjamin Franklin, I'm sure you've heard of, the American inventor and academic. Franklin was involved in establishing the University of Pennsylvania in 1751 under the motto of useful knowledge. And that influenced John Anderson. Anderson communicated with him regularly, in fact, accompanied him in Scotland and in Europe when he visited here. And never has our motto of useful learning uh, been so relevant in the past 200 years. And please remember, all of staff and students that are here, take that forward. It still defines our purpose as a leading international technological university with four outstanding faculties, not least the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, that is committed to being socially progressive. And for example, across the campus and in the buildings that you'll have passed on your way to the Barony here today, our academics and students are developing drugs to diagnose and fight disease. We have several drugs currently on clinical trials in the areas of cancer treatment, kidney disease, 
infection management and inflammatory diseases. Strathclyde are also producing energy technologies and policy and regulatory solutions to tackle climate change and to establish a low carbon economy. We are revolutionising global manufacturing and helping to create the fourth industrial revolution on data analytics, AI, artificial intelligence and robotics and automation. In fact, only tomorrow morning, uh, Nicola Sturgeon will be on the campus with us, uh, our campus extension at the Glasgow Airport to open our new lightweight manufacturing centre, the first component of a £190 million investment creating the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland. But our students, our most important product, they still continue their work in Africa, establishing clean water and power supplies, deploying uh, healthcare systems in remote communities, and introducing new telecommunications infrastructure. They're bringing prosthetic limb and bioengineering technologies to those in need in India. Of course, we're working to inform public policy on national economic strategy, education, health, the legal system, and energy. And our staff in the £100 million Technology and Innovation Centre down in George Street is work, are working intimately with our public and private sector industrial partners on energy systems, photonics, pharmaceutical manufacturing and bio nanotechnology. Thomas Edison, whom I quoted earlier on, mentioned that he, his technical teams and his laboratories were his inventions factory. The University of Strathclyde has effectively become the innovations factory. And just last week, our court, our governing body, gave us approval now to make another £150 million investment down on the space between High Street, Ingram Street and George Street to create the Glasgow City Innovation District, driving this city forward into the 21st century in the same spirit as those at the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, the merchants and the traders working on fintech, med techno uh, medical technology, quantum, industrial informatics uh, and space technology. And that's what useful learning is about. We're giving business and industry the tools that they need to be more innovative and to promote economic growth, helping to create jobs and provide us all with a quality of life that is both sustainable and healthy. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, we're providing people with the opportunity to transform their lives and the lives of their families and communities. As I mentioned earlier, we still attract many first-generation university students to Strathclyde. And these are just some of the reasons that we've had a terrific string of external, independent recognition of what we do and how we do it. In recent years, we've been recognised at the annual UK Times Higher Education Awards. That's a, effectively the University Oscars ceremony. And these include uh, the UK Research Project of the Year. We were named the UK University of the Year, Entrepreneurial University of the Year, the Business School of the Year, and very proudly for me, on behalf of my staff, Workplace of the Year, which talks about what we do and how we do it. And just last year, we received the Herald Award as the Higher Education Institution of the Year. So Strathclyde continues to produce and demonstrate our ability to have a disproportionate impact, principally graduates through you. Whilst we carry out wonderful research and translate it into society and industry, you are the people that make the difference. We're proud of you. As you go forward into your careers, into society, into your communities, make a difference, strive for better, and make sure you understand and take on the challenge of making a difference. And of course, the world-class research that we carry out uh, carries forward our flag uh, in the world. Uh, only this morning, I've had the principal of Waterloo University in Canada, uh, their finest university here, coming to Strathclyde to engage with us for education and research collaboration. Our universities must be seen as an investment and while Scottish Government invests around 1.2 billion into the Scottish higher education system, we deliver back almost 7 billion pounds worth of impact on the economy. And certainly, the achievements of our students and staff in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences throughout the past year give me great confidence for the future. And I've had to truncate the fantastic list of achievements here, are just a few. Uh, the Strathclyde Law School has won the university's biggest ever research grant for what's called the One Ocean Hub Project, a £20 million grant bringing together 50 international partners to transform the world's response to plastic pollution, rising sea levels and overfishing, and vulnerable communities, including, in particular, women and the youth of these uh, endangered communities around the world. The project is led by Professor Eliza Morgera and the Strathclyde Centre for Environmental Law and Governance. 
We've also been creating a new home for Scotland's National Centre for Languages and the Confucius Institute for Scotland Schools in the Strathclyde-owned Ramshorn Theatre down on Ingram Street. Ramshorn is receiving a £2 million facelift. With, uh, with this investment, we'll create a publicly accessible hub for learning Chinese and becoming more, more familiar with the uh, uh, Chinese culture and the communities. And the new premises will have the capacity to host performances, conferences and exhibitions. Our researchers are also exploring how older people can help primary school pupils boost attainment. The study by our School of Psychological Sciences and Health is exploring ways in which older adults can support pupils from primary one to four, uh, their activities in reading and writing, while bringing benefits to older people too. According to new guidelines issued by the World Health Organization, and I think uh, a lot of folk in the hall will recognize this, that children under five must spend less time sitting watching screens or being restrained in prams and seats, getting uh, better quality sleep and having more time for active play if they are to grow up healthy. It always seems to me that research comes out with some common sense. We need to listen to that. But the guidelines were drawn up by an international panel of 16 experts on childhood physical activity, including our very own Professor John Riley as the sole UK participant. And a welcome trust grant of almost a million pounds was awarded to Professor Jim Mills and Dr. Laura Kelly to enable Strathclyde's historians to build a, a medical humanities training and research consortium with three Chinese partners, Shanghai University, Fudan, and the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences. And of course, something that we're very proud of, and that's our Strathclyde Law Clinic. And many of the students in the hall today will have had some experience there. Uh, this award-winning clinic, led by our students and supported by our great staff, was joint winner of the Public Service Award in the Northwest Glasgow Community Champions Award. And they also have managed to uh, clock up another terrific success, reaching over the past 16 years a total of 1,816 cases that have been handled and over £800,000 won or saved for clients. Ladies and gentlemen, this law clinic is absolutely world-beating and they deserve a round of applause. So, graduates, this is the exciting context in which you should view your awards. You're graduates of a university that places our students at the heart of all that we do. Of course, we value excellence in both education and research, and we create strong connections with society at large, as well as with our public sector partners and business, and of course, increasingly international collaborators. And with regard to collaboration, the world's best universities contribute, collaborate, and compete on the international stage, and we are no different with very many high-quality global partners. We have over 200 international university partners, but the, uh, those that uh, I uh, engage with in particular on behalf of Strathclyde include in the United States, Stanford, MIT, New York University, with growing partnerships with Caltech and the University of Southern California, this latter one being led by uh, humanities and social scientists. In China, we work with Tsinghua University, the number one in that massive country and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, the number one technological university in Asia. In Singapore, it's the National University of Singapore, Nanyang Technological University, and across Europe, uh, a large group of deep partnerships. I have the privilege of being president of an entity called CESAR, which is a 52 European universities of science and technology. And we're trying to show the politicians what collaboration means, what open doors means for the translation of talent and opportunity, not least which for our, our young people, and the notion of shared value and the principles of openness, collaboration, and contribution. And that won't change regardless of the uh, political outcome we may see in the next three to six months. But of course, our students, most importantly, directly benefit from being part of an international university. This helps them emerge with skills so necessary to help themselves in Scotland play a full part in the world. And our students have been exposed to the richness of different cultures and traditions. And they leave here today remembering that they have obligations as global citizens. And on that international stage where Strathclyde is doing so well, we never forget our roots here in the city of Glasgow. Uh, I chair the Glasgow Economic Leadership Board with uh, many business leaders, as well as Susan Aitken, that I co-chair the board with, uh, the leader of the Glasgow City Council, captioning again the opportunity to build Glasgow's economy, the fastest growing economy outside the southeast of England, around the London area, uh, building in 
finance and business services, low carbon technologies, life sciences, as well as tourism and events. And with regard to our socially progressive mission, I've mentioned that a couple of times, that is epitomised in one very important area. As we should say we are the Scottish Research Intensive University with the highest number of participants in widening access to our degree programmes, with students from some of the most challenged backgrounds in Scotland coming here uh, just this year. Another thousand plus came to join us because they're capable, they're ambitious, and they have the wherewithal in terms of the spirit to get things done. Uh, and 500 of them came from the, the lowest quintile in the community, and they're succeeding. We're getting them in, we're keeping them in, and we're moving them on to a career. And uh, in fact, at the start of the graduation season, which was not just last week, but last month, we had the Children's University here in the university. I'm the chancellor of the Children's University. We had 220 youngsters aged 5 to 14 sitting where our graduates are with their gowns on and their mortar boards and their families and friends and supporters on the other, hand, uh, other side, none of them having been across the threshold of a university before. And up they came uh, to get capped by me because they had a little learning passport. So when they go to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery, they get a stamp on their passport. They go to the Glasgow Science Centre, they get another stamp. They do a night class or whatever. And when they eventually fill their wee book, they get a bachelor's degree from the Children's University. If they keep doing it in the next couple of years, they get a master's degree, and I graduated a few master's degree students. And yes, you've guessed it, uh, the very best of them uh, get PhDs from the <laughs> Children's University. So my academic staff are going to have the challenge of receiving PhD uh, graduates sometime in the next few years. Uh, that's about Strathclyde connecting to the community, and we love it for lots of reasons, supported by uh, our court members, our governing body, not least of which Marianne Venman, who uh, I'm delighted to welcome here again, uh, where we see these youngsters reveling in their achievements. And I particularly love it because it's one of the few graduation ceremonies where I get to look tall, at least for, <laughs> at least for five minutes until the 12 year olds come along and I need to start stretching again. But uh, it's wonderful. So let me conclude by saying if I characterize your university in 2019, I would describe it as having ambition focus and momentum with the agility and commitment so necessary to continue to deliver our strategic objectives in this rather uncertain uh, time across the sector and society, but we're doing it and we're doing it at pace. It's a great privilege for me to lead this wonderful institution with the superb support I get from my executive team as well as from our broader community of academics, professional services and support staff. And I truly believe that our founder, John Anderson, back in the enlightened period, would recognize what we are doing today as the realization of what he sought to establish at that time. And now we're seeking in this modern society to be an agent for positive change in our city, in Scotland, the UK, and further afield. And to all of you here in the Barney Hall, I'm certain that today's graduates will have an enormous impact on society and their professions. And 2019 can truly become a vintage year. And with that in mind, and as you leave the hall today, you leave not with an award. Let me remind you about your responsibilities. You, you join a graduate community of over 175,000 Strathclyders around the world, a veritable army that's changing the world and making a difference. But whatever you do with your degree and wherever you go to pursue your career, remember that useful learning means that you apply your knowledge for the benefit of others. Please make a positive impact for yourselves and the communities that you belong to. Respect diversity, value freedom of expression and thought, and reach conclusions and resolve disputes through the application of reason and tolerance. These characterize the core values of university. And let me return to today's celebration. We're all here to mark your achievements for all those that have uh, received their degrees today. On behalf of the university, I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to all of you and wish you every success in your future careers. Please stay in touch with us. Let us know about your progress. And finally, well done, and please enjoy the rest of this very special day. Thank you very much. I'm now waiting for the ancient signal from the back of the hall. That was the thumbs up which means that the weather is good. Uh, so just before I conclude, the, the stage party will process down the aisle, joined by our graduates, as many of them as possible, please, and uh, all the supporters, families, and friends. 
Please come to reception over in the Lord Todd Hall, which is about 100 yards off to the right as you leave the hall, and where you can have a refreshment and we'll have a chance to have a chat with as many of you as possible. So, graduates, well done again. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation.